Hello everybody, welcome to the United Way TV. My name is Rob Dukan. In this video, we'll be telling you guys five big mistakes Eric Ten Hag did. Five big mistakes Eric Ten Hag did. Why was he sacked? Yeah, you will say it's results. Obviously, that's correct. But look, there are certain attributes in Eric Ten Hag which I personally think, you know, played uh, 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 to, to his downfall. And in this video, I'll tell you guys my opinion. And by the way, before we start, guys, before you start liking the video, tell me one of yours. Just give me five reasons why you think Eric Ten Hag was sacked a part of the fact of the results because i think there were certain things which us the fans we didn't know which was in the background and i'll start with number one number one was his communication eric ten Hag, you know uh the biggest problem with eric ten Hag was that he is uh i don't know i i, I say i don't know I, I don't know if that's a dutch thing but i think it's more a german thing and you know eric ten Hag, uh, they did his uh, trade also in germany he was one of the assistants of uh, uh uh, the Pep Guardiola back in the days with Bayern Munich. So he's a very stoic uh, person, a very difficult person to deal with. Maybe difficult is a hard word, but he is a very straightforward person. And uh, that wasn't that didn't help with the British media. That is what I have been saying. For those of you who have been watching this community uh, for a long time, I've been complaining about how the British media always wants uh, pe uh, people who can give them that inside of the club. Eric Ten Hag was a disciplinarian. I am very confident that if Eric Ten Hag's management, if he was a manager in the 90s, he would have done really well. Back in the days when football wasn't show business, you know. So I think as a disciplinarian, he played a little bit uh, against him, especially with the results who were not backing up uh, his attitude. So I'll go to number two. Number two was uh, Eric Ten Hag. Um, He's, uh, he's not only the communication skills. Eric Ten Hag was a stubborn manager. Let's, uh, let's agree with it. We saw this with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Look, one of the biggest qualities of a manager is for you to be stubborn. It might sound counterintuitive, but let me tell you guys this. One of the biggest qualities of a manager is for you to be stubborn. But it becomes a problem when things are going your way. It becomes a strength when things are going on your way. You see what I mean? A good example of what I'm trying to say is uh, someone like Pep Guardiola who, can, who sticks to his guns no matter how difficult things are. But guess what? Pep Guardiola is Pep. He is backed by a huge sum of money. He's backed by really top players. His system is bought by the team and it is easy for uh, him to, to stick on that uh, uh, system, if I'm making sense. So, um, yeah, I think uh, Eric Ten Hag wasn't that flexible, very stubborn as a tactician. He came to Manchester United with a different style of play. He was playing with a back four in Ajax. They were playing a very expansive football, but when he came to Manchester United, the biggest problem he had was he wasn't ready to adapt, uh, to adapt, uh, to, 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 to tweakle things, uh, which I, I must say uh, it was uh, wrong. Uh, I think Eric Ten Hag uh, has uh, generally, uh, he, he, he has done a lot of things this season which uh, maybe make the fans to turn on him. If we had clearly 20, 25% of people who wanted him sacked last season, that was before the finals. After the five, first two or three games, I think he built up to closely to 40%. Most people would have wanted him to be sacked, honestly. Not only because of the results, because the vision wasn't there. He came with the vision and he couldn't bring it up. Number three, I think uh, Eric Ten Hag, the biggest, or one of the biggest mistakes he will regret if he's honest with himself, us as a fan. Look, football is an easy game. We watch it. We have our, our opinions. The manager is just the boss. He executes it. Look, the biggest error he did is that you might say uh, is, is the youth of be, being favorable. I mean, fa favoritism in the team. You could see there is games where a good example will be Ahmad. Ahmad has a good game and then he disappears. Ahmad helped us with Liverpool in the quarterfinals and then we didn't see him in the finals. We barely saw him in the semifinals. So I think one of the biggest attributes of football these days, considering that it's kind of a show business and it's watched by um, billions or billions, let me talk like Donald Trump people, uh, is because, uh, you know, football these days is something which the fans also have an idea. When you watch, when you watch every season, at least 100 to 200, 150 games, don't tell me you don't understand the rules. Don't tell me you don't see the tactics. Don't tell me. You, you, uh, you don't understand the certain decision made by manager. That's what uh, it is. The idea, the fact that um, uh, the modern football fan has too much access to watch these games, not only about your favorite club, in this case United, you watch other clubs and other leagues. It gives you an idea and different perspective 
on how to judge your present situation. So this played against Eric Tenak very big, I mean, big time he did. I remember the press conference he had uh, also with um, uh, a, a British journalist really confronting him that, uh, telling him we have won two trophies in two seasons and what is what, what, what are your criticism? And the guy just easily named about uh, he he just named out I mean out of his the back of his head three main problems with United which most of you will agree with. Yeah guys if you're getting uh some value in this video just slash that like and let's move on and guys please share subscribe would like to get you guys uh, on board. Another thing I have seen that's number four which I've seen Eric Tenak the reason why I think Eric Tenak um uh, was sad is uh it would be very hard for us to play down uh the fact that he has spent some good sum of money. Eric Tenak, the club has backed Eric Tenak. This is his third season. This is a manager that had to be sacked, even though I wanted him personally to stay because I see, think he's a good coach. But he has spent a lot of money with Manchester United. I mean, all these figures. Yes, during his period, he sold players as well. This is what we forget. I mean, this is the highest. This is the one. This is the first manager since Alex Ferguson that has brought us over a hundred million in sales in the season, and uh, yeah. So I think Eric Tenag, uh, ha, ha, the, the, we he spent a lot. We got the players that he won. Then he couldn't change. He's he, we, we Manchester United fans. We know you know guys how we are so close to our club, like other top clubs. But we, in this case, we're Manchester United. In the summer, one of the most funniest thing with all the bonnets, with all the fan uh, community, is that we knew we knew that United was going for Ogate, right? Ogate comes to United, and he is not integrated into the team. How how can you explain that to to you? To you, let me just put it this way: in the lowest minutes, like your you have your wife who or your girlfriend or your whatever your boyfriend, he wants this um, this beautiful car. You know, see, he's been going to work every day by 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 buy on him by bike, and you buy him this car. You buy him or her you know, this car, and guess what? It is winter. The car is standing outside. Nobody is using it, and he uses it only on Sunday to go to church. He doesn't use it to work, and he still needs to use his bike. This is very. This is the simplest way to understand what will be your thinking. Look, these are things we don't see, but all of us we have we invest in different areas in our life. Um, you know, I don't think you um in us we're on we're we 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 like buying what Eric Ten Hag was doing, because when you buy what a manager does, you don't really sack the manager, because when you spend a lot of money for Ogate, trying to beat the price to bring it at the last minute because you want to get a favorable deal, and the manager in charge doesn't use the player. This is uh, very simple. This is just this is just a, a very good example to show you that Eric Ten Hag, um, he was living in a, a, I mean, in an abstract world in the way he was thinking. Maybe he was too confident, like Manchester United does with most of their manager, giving them that support verbally, but also I won't say stab on the back, but also because um, the reality kicks in and they make the most difficult uh, decision by sacking the manager. So um, I think that's it. And the number five one, Eric Tenak, uh, from the Runa reason that uh, he was uh, sacked is he proved to Manchester United that he cannot really build a team. Look, one of the biggest qu uh, qualities of the modern football manager is your charisma, the results, and the ability to build up young talent into your team. Yes, you might take Ganacho, you might take Obi Mueno, you might take Cody Tola, but there was no vision of building those youth players in the team. I think one of the biggest key that Robert Amorin has come into the Manchester United is because uh, to Manchester United is because the, the owners of Manchester United really believe that this young manager is going to build a club, a, a team of players. He's going to use the youth team. We have been hearing about Obi, the Nigerian um, Danish attacker. Uh, being integrated with the first team. We've been hearing a lot of stories, but I think Robin uh, Amorin is a manager who will take that risk, giving some time to these youth players, because this is what Manchester United is all about. I read the book about the, the Bobby, Bosby Babes. I wasn't born back then. I saw Alex Ferguson as a kid till I'm not an old man. Um, manage the team by bringing in young players, giving them chances. I'll tell you this for free. Uh, Eric Ten Hag was scared to death to be using these young players as a risk. 
and that has really uh, made Manchester United uh, think twice about you know the long term future of the club, the brand of the club, the image of the club is based on bringing young players and we have a manager which we bring in experienced players they don't they are not used that well casemiro he didn't have he didn't use casemiro that well yes he wasn't playing well the manager needs to take a blame here i kept saying that this is not only on the manager but it was really clear that uh, eric tenag didn't really deserve to be around for a very long time so uh, the, um, the conclusion of this video is that I think the board of Manchester United discovered that we cannot take not only the results, the results we can lose games, we will lose games with Amaron. But uh, firstly, is that they didn't see the vision with Eric Ten Hag, they didn't see the consistency in terms of buying players and using them, they didn't see that Eric Ten Hag could manage the bunch of players because at the end of the day, look, no matter what kind of players you have, the manager has to have a a tactic that keeps them um, uh, happy. Happy is not by you making them play, but uh, having a, a plan to see how they integrate and being productive on the pitch. The whole idea which you, you hear about players playing for the manager, for me, I hate that term. I think it's wrong. You play for a football club, you play for your career and your pride. But as a manager, it's your responsibility to get the bunch of players you have to play well. Anyway, guys, these are my five reasons I think Eric Ten Hag had to be sacked. And these are the areas where I think uh, Amaron has to improve. Tell me what you think below. What are your reasons? What do you think Amaron needs to improve in order for us to... Uh, what does Amaron needs to fix in order for us to, to move up to the next level? Guys, make sure you click the like of the video if you like it. If you don't like it, I want to see that dislike, you know. But um, guys, stay tuned. We'll be uploading videos trying to do that every day. Uh, yeah, and uh, we'll be giving you guys a preview for... Yeah, Amaron's first game, which will be a cracker against Ipswich on the 24th. With that all said, guys, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.